Yeah, so certainly the uh, when you win and when you lose, you're fighting different battles. And so I think everybody was every everybody was certainly hungry coming off of a two and seven season. And so, I mean that that's after loss. And so you're hungry for those victories. But then it's a totally different battle after a successful year. So you talk about fighting the complacency battle um, because complacency is it's contagious and it's cancerous and it's so bad for a for a football program. And so that's kind of been the big thing is is fighting complacency and and learning to do those same daily disciplines that um, got us to where we were at the end of last year. And so we really view this year, this year as a blank slate and really every Saturday is a blank slate because we're trying to create a masterpiece every Saturday when we go out there. Um, and, and it takes that preparation going in, uh, that, that those daily disciplines, and those are the most important things that we've focused on this off season is, is building those daily disciplines so that when the pressure comes, um, we grow from that. Yeah. Um, so last year was the was the best season um, Baylor has ever had yet, and so I think the yet is a big deal. Um, we're always looking to grow. Twelve and two. Um, I mean, those two those two losses were very controllable losses and pretty big blemishes for us. We you know we look back. There there are certainly um, large successes that we had last year. Um, that we're very proud of and we can definitely learn from going into this year. But even more so, I think looking back on the losses that we had and some of the moments where we didn't act how we wanted to, um, those are as big motivators for us as anything. And so learning to grow from those losses and, and yes, taking that next step to, to get to the playoff and, and win another Big 12 title and really create a legacy and create a program that everybody looks to as um, you know the the program in the Big 12. Yeah, I think standard is a big word that gets thrown around, but it, it, you can see the standard on different different stages, right? So there there are individual standards, and I I view Terrell Bernard and Jalen Petrie as the standards that we looked up to um, in our program. And then I mean, in college football, in so for a long time in the Big 12, Oklahoma was the standard because they won, you know, X championships in a row. We want to become that team in this conference, and. Um, I mean, college football-wise, college football-wide in the country, Alabama is the standard. Uh, Alabama, Georgia, those teams that are, you know, perennial playoff teams. And so we, we hope to become that. Obviously, those are kind of high-minded goals, big, um, big aspirations, and we don't take those lightly. And so we're, we're looking to grow in those areas. And, and it's really the daily disciplines that will take us there. Um, you know, we know that we have to take care of today first. And so, uh, you know, personally, I'm just focused on having a good July 13th and then finishing the week out and then finishing the summer and then having a great camp. I'm going to I'm going to take this one. Yeah, I, I think there are great memories, obviously. I mean, um, I, I bawled my eyes out after that play. It was. It was a great full circle moment for us, um, especially after the year that we had before that. And, uh, but I mean, you're asking this question on July 13th. It's been seven months since that play and we kick off again in a couple months here. Um, and so I think keeping that in mind, um, I, I don't wanna keep the focus on that because we've had our time to, to celebrate Terrell, Jalen, JT, Jaron, all of those guys. And I love those guys, but it's time for Matt Jones. It's time for um, Apu Ika, it's time for all of these guys to take that next step and, and grow into their new roles. Yeah, I think there's, there's certainly a great responsibility in answering this question because I don't think we, we listen to the athletes all the time. But I think it, um, 
I mean, conference realignment is great for money. It's great for TV. Um, I mean, I know teams want to, or people around the country want to see USC travel to Columbus and play Ohio State. Uh, they want to see, you know, those big matchups. But at the same point in time, it's like Texas is going to leave our conference here. And there are, um, there are Baylor people that work with Texas people. Uh, there are Baylor people that work with Oklahoma people. And I think it's a shame to lose those regional rival rivalries. I mean, um, like that is college football to me. I grew up watching Iowa, Iowa State. I grew up watching Ohio State, Michigan State. And obviously those, um, those games may continue to happen. But um, if we lose regional um, rivalries and regional competition, I think that's a shame in college football. I, I don't think I'm, I can speak for the quality of football necessarily. I mean, I only started, um, what, two or three games at Iowa. Um, so, but I think, I don't have the numbers on this, but I think speaking like when conferences play each other, I think that's really the only time that you can compare conferences. And um, I mean, I think the Big 12 did well in bowl season last year, um, but I'd, I'd need fact checks on that, so yeah. Yeah, so Coach McGuire is a high energy guy. Um, really proud of the things that he's gone on to do. Um, and really happy for him, really happy for his family. You know, Garrett was a senior, uh, his son. Uh, Garrett now works with the Panthers. And so Garrett was a senior at Baylor when I first got here. And um, really proud of the things that Garrett has gone on to do. And, and obviously, Debbie McGuire, his, um, his wife, not, not Garrett's wife, Joe, uh, Coach McGuire's wife. Um, they, uh, I mean, I'm super happy for them. They, uh, they were very welcoming when I got to Baylor. And I think they were a big part of growing what Baylor has become. Um, and I think they're proud of that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them. And I wish them the best of luck. Yeah, so I think there are inevitably going to be comparisons drawn between me and Terrell or whoever and, and Jalen, but I don't think those uh, comparisons are necessarily fair just because those are, we're different players and we're different people. I don't want to be like Terrell Bernard. I love Terrell Bernard and that he was amazing for our football team, but I think it would be a disservice to my individuality if I tried to be like him, you know? Um, he, he's a great person and I, I'm going to try to be the, the same quality person that he is because I love him and, and everybody loved him when he was here. So, I mean, just, just speaking to that standard piece, we, we did lose quite a bit of leadership on the defensive side of the football last year. And so just knowing that being intentional about the communication pieces while we're on the field, uh, the leadership pieces while we're off the field, you know, in, in summer workouts and, and always pushing guys to grow. I think those are the biggest pieces that we can grow um, and kind of uh, complete to fill our roles. So, yeah, Blake has definitely grown in his leadership capabilities, and I'm certainly proud of the way that he's gone about that. Um, very thankful for Gary and the year that he had last year. Like, super proud of him. Um, very thankful to have him in our lives and and have him be a builder of our culture um, and obviously wish him the best moving forward. But Blake, um, I mean, he has shown his confidence, his leadership abilities this summer since the, the QB1 job was named. And I'm just really, really proud of the way that he has brought that confidence and, and tried to kind of uh, spread that to other people and spread that to the guys around him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got that question on Sirius XM. They asked me because I think we have a, a history of that, right? So Abram Smith was a linebacker and then we moved him off to offense. I, I played a little bit of a unique role last year. 
Um, but I think those questions will be answered as we see the needs arise. I wouldn't put it out of the question, um, but I, I'm not sure yet. I'm not one to speak for like the depth chart or anything like that. You'd have to ask coach about that. But um, I mean, not certain about that right now. So. I don't think shocking is the right word um, because, I mean, you look at you look at the 2020 year, right? And we we had a number of one score ball games, I believe. Like we held we held Oklahoma to three points in the first half, I think. Um, and then Texas Tech beat us on a game winning field goal, game winning drive. And I mean, you, you just look at that year and um, we showed glimpses of really good football. Uh, but we never put a full game together, really. Um, and I think that's a that's a fight that all teams are really trying to fight is putting the full game together. And I mean, we we kind of through great leadership, through all of those offseason growth processes and, and just a little bit of time um, added to the equation. I think you saw um, the, the daily things that we've been doing in the in the results that we showed um, last last season in 2021. Yeah, I I don't know if I can compare Coach Aranda to anybody else. Um, I mean, I haven't I haven't been around a ton of coaches, but um, I I've really grown to love the style that Coach Aranda brings because everything that he does, there's a reason for it. He's very intentional. Um, I mean, he's he's a very cerebral personality, and so I think. At the, at the beginning, it was kind of hard for guys to get used to that a little bit. And so I think you probably saw that a little bit in 2020. But he's he's become a much greater head coach as, as he started because he places a high value on growth on himself first before um, putting it on other people. And it, I'm just really thankful to have such a such a head, a head coach with such integrity and humility and and all of those great qualities that I know you guys describe him as. So. I think he's a calculated person. And so whenever he thinks about the decisions he's making, he thinks about the potential ramifications of those decisions and you know the butterfly effects that those decisions can have. And so I think he um, he, he puts the thoughts in the, on the front end and then tries to make a decision. And, and uh, looking back on it, he wouldn't make another decision because he's, he's done those thought processes and he's looked. He has, he's very forward thinking, and so I think his, his decision making models in his head are are very advanced and they're very intentional. And so I'm. I don't think he is necessarily um, one to regret many decisions because he is so forward looking. I don't think I can speak for the standard that the Big 12 is held to, but I know we need to win and I know we need to play good football. And I think I don't think that the the conference football or conference or college football playoff committee is is um, is not reasonable. I think they're very reasonable. And so I think if we play good enough football, I think we're going to get in. But I'm not really worried about that right now. I'm worried about you know, finishing the summer and, and playing those games because I think people expect us to walk out there and win 12 games or whatever, but um, it's a blank slate, like I talked about. It's a clean canvas and we're, we have to go beat Albany on whatever game or whatever day we play that game. Yeah, so 
our huge thing at Baylor, I'm sure you've heard everybody talk about it because it's that important is person over player. I mean, it, it's speaking to the things off of the field that will impact the, the play on the field and better people make better players. And really when you look at football, I think a lot of people think of it as a zero sum game. They think, okay, this person's a winner, this person's a loser. Um, and I don't view it that way. I think Baylor has, has shifted that mindset. I, I view it as a positive sum game. Um, you know, everybody is better because we have played college football. Um, and I view that the same, um, you know, when it comes to position battles, when it, be, when it comes to, um, you know, individual games, it's, it's all a positive sum game in my mind because everybody is growing from it. Everybody is getting value from those pieces. And it's all about, um, you know, the things off of the field. I, I spoke to, I spoke to this point in a previous interview, but I mean, when you get a Baylor bear, um, you're going to get a great member of the community. You're going to get um, a really intentional person. You're going to get a pro that will take care of business because of their experiences that they've had. And that's how I view that, that positive sum game. And I'm, I'm very thankful for the guidance that I've been given and the, um, the leadership I've had contact with at Baylor. Yeah, my, my personal journey has certainly been unique when it comes to spirituality and, um, and, you know, value that I've placed on the game. For a long time, football was my life and, and I viewed everything as, okay, I'm going to do everything I can to win these games and this is the end goal and the NFL is the end goal. But now it's kind of just like, I'm doing all these things and they're really awesome, but I'm, I love the people that I'm with and I'm trying to enjoy every day on a daily basis. And I think I, I did have, um, I did have that mindset, but I've, I've found clarity in the game through the game. And I, I've, in that way, I feel like I've used the game, certain guys, the game uses them and certain guys, uh, they use the game to get to where they want to be. And, um, I'm really proud of, I mean, I hate to speak about myself because it, it feels kind of selfish, but I'm extremely proud of the growth that I've gone through the past three years. And I wouldn't be able to do it without the people at Baylor and the people around me, because I mean, without Terrell Bernard, without Jalen Petrie, without Dave Aranda, I don't know who I am. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just so thankful for that process. So. Yeah, Are you speaking economically? Um, yeah, so. It's really a difficult question because you have 23 year old sixth year seniors on, on one end of the spectrum and then you have 17 year old kids who are, who are right out of the high school. And so I don't think it's necessarily fair to treat us like pros, but when you look at the, the economic value of certain guys and um, when you look at the numbers uh, that, that certain guys put up, um, and that's speaking from NIL and things like that, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to recognize the person behind that number. And I think that's kind of a reductionist quality to, to reduce these players to, hey, this guy signed for 1.3 million, this guy signed for, for 9 million. Um, I, I don't think that's necessarily fair because, um, like behind behind those numbers are a kid that's trying to grow. He's trying to navigate his way through life. I mean, I, I know you guys are reporters, but like, I don't think you would want anybody to judge your actions um, as an 18 year old kid. Um, and and I know like we we absolutely deserve some of the responsibility that we're given. And um, I'm not complaining in any way for for that responsibility because we get a lot of a lot of privileges that other people don't have access to, but. Um, I think it is important to remember the person behind the number and the person um, that, that is involved because that's what we care about um, at Baylor. So do you feel like you're a guy that has to find his name on the right now? I think it was definitely harder for us to fight to be humble um, earlier in the offseason, but as I said before, we're, we're seven months out from making that play in, in this end zone, in this facility. and we're we're definitely moved on to this year um we're excited to play albany we're excited for this next opportunity because a lot of these guys 
Um, I know I know you guys view Baylor as a as a program, but a lot of the guys that are going to play this year haven't had that opportunity yet. And so when you look at a Devin Neal, when you look at a really a Blake Shapin, like um, you're getting guys that that weren't necessarily um, those guys, like they weren't in the same role as they were last year. And so those guys are certainly hungry to to prove themselves and and show that we are still the same Baylor. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I'm listed at like six two, six three, or something. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if I've grown. That's a funny question. Yeah. <laughs> could you could you speak up, please? Yeah. Yeah, so I had two offensive touchdowns that game. Um, yeah, so um, I'd, I'd love to have a defensive touchdown. I mean, that'd be awesome. But, um, I mean, I, I really admire the, the BYU program. So they came in. Their fan base was fantastic. I mean, they um, they did an awesome job traveling to Texas. And I think part of that was probably the, the future in the Big 12. Um, but I'm, I'm super excited to get out to, to Utah um, and play them. They, they're kind of a hard-nosed team, and we obviously have some, some crossover in our DNA when it comes to Coach Grimes, Coach Mateos, and, and they're proud of what they built there. And so I think when it comes to playing them this year, um, you know, schematically I'll figure it out uh, week two or whenever we play them. But, um, I mean, we play Baylor 12 times this year. It's, it's about our execution. It's not about the other team. It's not about who lines up across from us because we have enough talent. Um, but it's about, um, you know, taking that next step and, and growing in our shoes and knowing who we are and, and, and uh, kind of executing in that manner. Yeah, so I think a redefining of roles was necessary after last year, certainly. And so making sure that everybody knew their role. And obviously those those roles are fluid. It's not like, hey, I am the leader. This guy is, is the number two. Um, it's not like that. Um, it's making sure everybody um, everybody knows their role and, and can grow in their role. And they have all of the resources that they need to grow. And so we do a lot of work off of the field when it comes to emotional intelligence, connection, um, in, in team meetings and things like that. And those are all, you know, of the most vital importance um, when it comes to those high pressure situations. Um, and so a lot of that work was off of the field, but I think just kind of to, to circle back, it's, um, it, it's about redefining those roles and, and growing in those roles and um, yeah, just continuing to grow. Yeah, so Oklahoma was the standard for a long time, right? And I, th I think looking backwards, yeah, it was a big win. But I'll, I'll save those those moments for a couple years from now when I'm done playing and I hang my cleats up because, I mean, it 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 certainly looks big from the outside, but on the inside, okay, it's you finish the game at at 3 p.m. or whatever time we finish the game, and then by 3 p.m. the next day, we're done reviewing the film. Um, and so like we're moved on to whoever we play next. And so looking back on it, it was cool. And, you know, we see the highlights of it up in the facility and on social media and stuff. But it's really forward focused. It's um, we're not focused on the games last year that we won in whatever manner. It's about growing in our roles and and trying to win those new games this year. I mean, we do a lot of things out of just, I'll, I'll get a little bit technical here. So we do a lot of things out of very similar looks. And so it, it, it's confusing to opposing quarterbacks, opposing uh, offensive coordinators. And so a lot of teams do the check with me system. And so they'll line up, they'll see what look you're in, and then they'll look to the sideline. Like they'll do the fake clap. They'll look to the sideline, get the call from the offensive coordinator because they're changing their play based on our look. Um, but we have different different calls out of the same look. And so it can be kind of difficult for teams to do that against us. And I think when you speak to maturity of players, 
so it, it starts off of the field, the maturity piece, but then when you move into on the field, like an experienced player can show different looks um, and play the same call. And so when you when you look at it, last year we had, um, you know, McVeigh was a six year senior, JT, that was his last year, last year, um, Petrie, those dudes all showed different things. And so it's very confusing for the offense um, to see what we're doing. And so I think, it's 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 such a beautiful game because when you when you really look at it, it's um, like at the upper levels it becomes a mind game uh, because you're you're trying to listen to the offense's terminology, you're trying to catch little little pieces um, because you know what that means for them, and and you're trying to change what you're going to do off of that. And even if it's a step here, a step there, a step here, there is a conference championship. And so um, I think just getting to those deeper levels of the game has been just the most rewarding and, and um, I mean, worthwhile pieces for me is as you become closer to, to becoming a master at a craft, it, it just so many worlds, so many worlds of uh, possibility um, open up to you. And it's just such a beautiful game because there's 11 guys on the field. It's 53 yards wide, but there are just infinite possibilities. And um, yeah, it's, that's a short tidbit on why I love football. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the NIL piece definitely introduces new challenges um, for both the players and, um, you know, the businesses involved. But I really do like the, the current model that we have because you can, there are certainly celebrity cases out there. So, for example, like, like B. John Robinson has a Lamborghini deal, and I think that's awesome, like great for him. Um, he deserves that because his name, image, and likeness has brought him to that point. And I'm so glad he has that opportunity to have that deal. Um, but it would be a shame for, um, for like I talked about early, earlier, for people to reduce the, the person to the number. Um, and I think that happens a lot of time in the NFL. And I hope we continue to, to focus on the people involved because you know what? I got a free education. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to graduate with an MBA in December. Um, I, I got just so many skills from, from being a Baylor Bear, and that's enough for me. Um, I mean, I, I'm just so proud of, of the, you know, the development that you go through as a student athlete. And so when you talk about starting an NFL model, I think there are a lot of things that you're missing. Um, and number one would be being a student athlete and being a college student and impacting a community. So. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah, he, he good for him. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so obviously those dudes are awesome leaders, like both of those guys. And I had full confidence in the coaching staff and making the right decision. And it was kind of made known that whoever didn't win the job was going to transfer. And that's kind of the nature of college football now. And that was fine with us because we knew we had full confidence in the coaches. But at the same point in time, yes, it, it, it does suck to, um, to, you know, lose one of your best friends because, um, you know, you, you love to be around your friends. Um, but I mean, just super happy for Gary and, and happy that he's found a home, um, in South Florida and, you know, excited for, for Blake to lead our team now. Uh, he, he really deserves the opportunity that he's gotten and he's taken advantage of all of the opportunities that he's gotten this summer. And I'm just excited for him to carry that into the fall and, and continue to grow in his leadership capabilities and, and in his playing abilities.